I'm going to give a pretty easy like introductionary talk here, uh, which I decided to call Beyond the Hacking Face Twenty One. So there are actually three levels of uh, learning, deep learning, or diving into Hacking Face eco ecosystem. Like level one is uh, inference only when you just load models and run them. Uh, level two is fine tuning. And today I want, like, my wish is to go a bit further and uh, give a glance on level three, which is fine tuning with some understanding. And here, an emoji should be, but it's, uh, like, I, I don't know why. Uh, so the main question of this talk is like, what can we change in our training process, and what can we control? Uh, so. First, uh, we need to mention that like all tasks we are solving are in a supervised learning framework. Well, obviously there is reinforcement learning and stuff, but like uh, the vast majority of tasks uh, in NLP or computer vision, uh, which we solve using the Honey Face uh, ecosystem, are supervised learning. So like. We compute the model output for some batch, for some uh, part of training data, we compute the error, update the model parameters, and repeat. So, pretty easy. But, yeah, and we do it with the having face trainer. Of course, you can do it by hand, you can write a training loop by yourself, but uh, there is a special class for, for doing the same thing. Uh, first, uh, we need to understand how a training process looks. You, I'm sure you saw all these visualizations when something is happening with the lost surface. So, like, here is the lost surface, uh, which is this multi dimensional surface in a parameter space uh, with like last access being the loss or the error we have for our model for uh, like different parameters. So, and we want to, like during the training process, we want to find the lowest point on this surface. Uh, and the model, like, it doesn't matter whether it is a transformer or, I don't know, GPT-4, uh, it's just a function that depends on input and depends on parameters. Yeah, and uh, the thing is that, like in terms of memory, in terms of computational power, we can't we can't compute like all the points of our surface and just like uh, understand what is the lowest one. So uh, we want to walk along the surface by iterations, and it looks like rolling a ball of a surface. So what we can control here, we can control the surface. We can change it. But with changing the training data, with changing the hyperparameters of our model, and we can control the physics of how the ball rolls on the surface. Uh, but there is one thing. So, can you maybe answer the question what is the difference between machine learning and optimization? Any guesses? Uh, you, you can just talk out loud. Uh, optimal versus suboptimal? No, local versus global. Yeah, local versus global. Yeah, it's a pretty good answer. So, like, uh, in optimization, like, w w when we optimize just a function, we can optimize, uh, like, inf infinitely, uh, finding the, uh, the, I don't know, the, uh, uh, the global minimum. Uh, but here, in machine learning, uh, we actually have underfitting and overfitting, you know that. So like overfitting is when uh, the minimum we have is optimal for training, but it is not optimal for test. It is not optimal for like inference time. Uh, and even if we don't look at the uh, test loss surface, even if we don't look at the test error, we can say that this may be a bad minimum. However, it is a global minimum. So this is the main difference between machine learning and optimization, because like in optimization we would say that this is the, the best solution. But here we can find a global minimum, which still is an overfitting, which still means that 
uh, the model performs well on training data and will fail on test data. So instead, a measure minimum will be over here, which is not a global minimum, right? Yeah, so if this is the first difference. The second difference is that actually we have multiple surfaces and we have multiple problems uh, in one training. So, why? Because we use batch gradient descent. So, instead of like changing all the parameters and, uh, I mean, in, instead of uh, changing the parameters for all training data, we do it uh, for different parts of training data. Yeah, so, like, we are still, we are rolling the ball of the surface, but of different surfaces, and uh, we can't say that, like, the global minimum is the thing we want. We need to, we will always need to check with uh, some validation data that the model performs well. But yeah, so this is the difference. Uh, and, like, two main parameters uh, we can tune are batch size and learning rate. So, the common approach is that the batch size should be as, as big, as huge, and as, as it fits into the memory we have. Into VRAM, like GPU, I don't know. Uh, and the learning rate is, should, should be somehow proportional to the batch, batch size. So if uh, we take batch size twice big, twice bigger, uh, the learning rate should also be twice bigger. Uh, and this is a small problem with, uh, with this concept. So first, uh, Honey Face Trainer allows us to find batch size that is uh, as big as fits into memory. So, th th this is fine. But actually, it's wrong. So, there are papers that show that uh, we don't actually want batch size to be like uh, as big as possible. Uh, this is the first problem to consider. And the second one is that we don't know, we actually don't know the dependency between learning rate and batch size. So uh, the common approach is that the dependency is linear, but we actually don't know it. So this guy says it is more like a square of dependence. Uh, yeah, and if we want to train with some batch size, we, uh, we decided to train with, but we don't have enough memory, uh, a good result will be to uh, do gradient accumulation. So what is gradient accumulation? Uh, imagine uh, these are your steps uh, on, on loss surface. So if you set gradient accumulation steps uh, more than one, this is the default one, and this is what we see on a pink uh, curve, uh, we will uh, we will make less steps, uh, but we will uh, sum uh, the gradient values for each point. So uh, this means that uh, we can simulate training with bigger batch size. So for instance, if I have batch size 16 uh, and batch size 32 I want to train with doesn't fit into my memory, I can just set gradient accumulation steps equal to 2. It will still be an approximation, uh, but sometimes it helps. Uh, yeah, another thing is that uh, it is pretty common to change learning rate during the training. Mm, I think you know that. So, uh, for different loss surfaces, it is good to change it. Uh, like, it, it, it's, it's good not to uh, find a perfect learning rate at the beginning, but to change it uh, during the training. And a perfect way to do it is to use the rate scheduler. And uh, the thing is that in having face trainer, you are using a learning rate scheduler by default. So unlike like uh, vanilla PyTorch, uh, you are using this linear learning rate scheduler. So your learning rate uh, changes over time like this. You can set it to constant. And if your batch size is big, uh, the common approach is to use warm up. It looks like this. Yeah, so you just set some steps for linear increase of learning rate. Uh, my 
like mm, my favorite learner is scheduler, and I think you know it as well uh, is uh, reduced learn rate on Plateau. Uh, it is not inside hugging phase, but it's in Python, so you can just uh, pass it to hugging phase or to hugging phase trainer. And what it does, it just decreases the learning rate when the validation loss stops, uh, stops decreasing. So if your validation error uh, stops decreasing, it decreases the learning rate, uh, making the steps more accurate. Uh, yeah, so it usually helps. Uh, and another thing, another trick uh, which is pretty common is early stopping. So when your validation loss stops, stops decreasing, uh, you just stop the training itself. Uh, like a pretty, like <laughs> pretty easy way to spoil everything is to mess with this too. So you can easily see that we can uh, set the parameters of early stopping and uh, reduce the gradient plateau in such a way that they will mess with each other. Yeah, and we will have like bad stopping or bad degrees of learning rate. Uh, yeah, and also we can uh, we, we can control the physics of how our, our balls like follow the surfaces and uh, use different optimizers. Yeah, so uh, to, to, to set another optimizer or, or learn a scheduler, we can uh, change the arguments of the trainer itself. Uh, another thing we can use is gradient flipping. So uh, sometimes our step may be uh, too large and it will like uh, give, give us uh, the bad trajectory on the loss curve. Uh, in this case, we can set this parameter, which is by the way set uh, by, the, by default, but you can play with it. So it shrinks uh, the maximum uh, value of our step, like the maximum step size, and it gives more stable training. Uh, like I said, it is it is the default value of uh, you know this parameter, but you can play with it. Uh, yeah, and regularization. Uh, do you know what regular, what is the regularization? Yes, you, you can just maybe talk about. Preventing the model from. Uh overfitting or underfitting by excluding the data that is way out of the range? Uh, well, by, by excluding the data... Well, you're but right at the beginning, so... reducing the impact, so you divide by, I guess, the e to the power of it, so basically the number, the training data is too large, it basically reduces the impact it has on the outcome. Yeah, well, not necessarily, but yeah, you're right. So, like, uh, we need to prevent overfitting. Agenda with uh, regularization, so we need to prevent the right picture. Uh, yeah, and two common ways of regularization for neural networks are weight decay and dropout. So weight decay is maybe what you said. Uh, so it, it just like adding uh, norm of the parameters to our loss. Uh, you can do it with having face trainer like this. And uh, what it does, it like penalizes big values of our neural network parameters because big values of uh, big parameter values will give us an overfitting, the overfitted model that is too complex for for our task. And dropout is removing parameters randomly and training from different layers. Uh, but dropout uh, is like it is, it is a layer itself, so we can change it, uh, change its values uh, in different parts of our model. So imagine we are fine-tuning a transformer, or fine-tuning, I don't know, with some part of the transformer, just an encoder, like, like here we have an encoder, uh, which is distal burden. Uh, we have a head uh, of two linear layers and one dropout layer. So um, before the training, in having phase trainer, you can just Play with this uh, p value. So the problem. p is the probability of uh, each each neuron to be muted. So like if p is one, uh, nothing uh, will um, like uh, nothing will uh, be here after this step. So no data. It will block all the data. Yeah. So 
good value is like from point one to I don't know point three. Yeah. So and you can play with it. Uh, and another another thing we can do is adjust our head. So usually when we are training a, a model for some task, we take a pre-trained model like a transformer, transformer graph, and we uh, are setting our head. So we, we add in uh, a classification or or uh, um, like classification head or a head for some other task like regression head. Uh, yeah, this is how it looks like from the previous slide. And uh, what can we do with this head? Like obviously we can add more layers, but it won't work. So like it's a pretty dumb way to to change something. Uh, much more clever way. Like uh, in my understanding, is to reconnect the head differently. So uh, by default, the head is literally a head. So you have transformer layers and a head on top of it. Uh, but instead, you can connect the head to multiple transformer layers. Uh, yeah. So for instance, you can concatenate the outputs of two transformer layers. Uh, and I think the last thing I wanted to mention here is that uh, Hacking Face Trainer does not restrict anything on what parameters are frozen and which are not. So like usually uh, when fine-tuning, uh, you either uh, use a very small learning rate with all parameters unfrozen, or freeze uh, the parameters of the pre-trained body. So, like this. Uh, yeah, so Using this, you can freeze and unfreeze whatever you want in your model. Uh, and all hyperparameters I mentioned are trainable, like are searchable via hyperparameter search of trainer. So you can actually do it automatically. Uh, but a good insight here is not to uh, is not to try to search everything uh, at once. So you don't want to to search like. Uh, your architecture, uh, your neural network uh, architecture and learning rates uh, during the, like, the same hyperparameter search session. Yeah, thanks for attention. It was like a pretty much easy, uh, like an easy recite book for you. Maybe you know them. And uh, please ask your questions if any. Using cutting the head to different um, transformer layers. In what task would you do that? Um, yeah. In what task would I connect uh, the head to different transformer layers? I think in my, like it doesn't depend on the task literally. So like uh, the head itself depends on the task, but how I connect the head doesn't depend on the task. So like you can think of it as of uh, using different, well, they will be connected, uh, but using different embeddings for one prediction. So, like, high level embeddings, lower level embeddings, something like that. So, I would do it for any task engine. I will try. But it's all, uh, it, it's all up to experimentation, so you need to experiment with it. It's not like a guarantee that it will work. Um, can the face trainer be used with models that are not directly data from? Yes, case? yes. I wanted to, to create a special slide for that. <laughs> but yes, a hugging face trainer is completely universal. So you can set, like, you can use hugging face trainer for, it's like PyTorch Lightning, Lightning, if you know that. So hugging face trainer can be used for all models. Even like, I don't know, you can train LSTM with hugging face trainer. Or Persetron. <laughs> Which will be stupid, but yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be explicitly in PyTorch, like can it be TML, TensorFlow, or any framework? Like, uh, well, in this talk, I discussed like PyTorch version of of Hyper Face Trainer, but uh, for TensorFlow, like I, I, I bet everything's the same. So like for TensorFlow, you as well you can train every uh, TensorFlow graph with with 
I think we're finished.